Hello and welcome to another exciting Web Factory tutorial. This time I'm not gonna show you how to configure or to use any control, but I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom Silverlight control. We're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna take it step by step. Because of this I'm gonna split the long video tutorial in smaller steps. So here is what you're gonna do in the first episode. We're gonna do the simplest control which will display the value of a signal. As you can see right here, this is our control and this is the test center and I'm gonna show you how this will work at the end. So any value that our signal has will be displayed in our control. So let's get started. Here we are in Microsoft Visual Studio. With Visual Studio we're gonna create a simple Silverlight custom control that will be tested in Expression Blend. So this control will not directly work in SmartAter. For this we're gonna have the second part of our tutorial. But for the first part we're gonna just make a simple Silverlight control. So let's get started. We're gonna create a new project and we're gonna make it a Silverlight class library. Now let's name this project custom control library. Click OK to confirm and select the Silverlight version as Silverlight 4. Click OK to confirm and here we are with our new project. I'm gonna close the class 1 CS and actually I'm gonna delete it because we don't need it and let's start working. The first step is to reference the right DLL and we're gonna open this references folder and we're gonna see we have some DLLs referenced here but we need the core of our SDK, the WF Core DLL. I'm gonna right click and add reference. Now browse and select the local disk where Web Factory 2010 is installed. So we're gonna go in program files x86 because I'm running a 64-bit machine so if you're running a 32-bit you're gonna find it simply in program files but in our case I'm gonna go to x86 and from the Web Factory 2010 folder select the, the Silverlight 4 folder the standard folder inside the Silverlight 4 and look for the WF core. Now the WF core DLL contains everything we need to use from the Web Factory SDK. So click OK to confirm and this will be added right here in our references. So the next step is adding a Silverlight templated control. So we're gonna right click on our project, add new item, select Silverlight and we have right over here Sil Silverlight templated control. Now let's name this templated control signal value output because this is what our control will do. So signal value output it is. Click add to confirm and here we have our signal value output CS and the generic XAML which is automatically created. Now let's head into the generic XAML for now and see what's inside. Now the generic XAML has the standard XAML layout already defined so we're gonna use this and we're gonna add our own XAML. So for this simple control we only need one single element and this element will be a text block named value display. We now have our text block and this is the only XAML element we're gonna use actually. Now what is very important is to make sure that we have the namespace correct and the local target type. Back in the source code the first thing we need to do is add another using and our next using it's gonna be WF Silverlight Core which comes from the WF Core DLL we have referenced a few minutes ago. Now we can start coding our control. The first thing we're gonna do is declare the elements we're gonna use in our control and we're gonna do it right over here above the constructor and the elements we're gonna use are a text block named value display a double named signal value and the connector itself now the text block will actually display the value of the signal the double named signal value will contain and display the value 
depending on the web factory's culture. And the connector, well, we're going to use the connector to register to the culture and to register to the signal value changed, but everything on the proper time. The next thing we need to do is start working on our properties. And the first property we're going to use is the signal name property, which will actually allow the user to select the signal that will be used with our control. So you can see here our property will reside in the web factory category and will be named signal name. Now we can set a default value for our property and I'm gonna do it just to show you how it's done. I'm gonna write here set point two. So this is gonna be the default signal which will be selected when the control will be placed on the surface of the page in expression blend. Moving on, we're gonna work on the second property which is gonna be the object ID. Our property will reside again in the web factory category and will be named object ID. And our third property for our control will be the signal prefix. Now the signal prefix is gonna stay in the same category as the previous two properties and is gonna be named just like this signal prefix. Now that we have our three properties ready we're gonna see them in action later in design time but for now we're gonna start focusing on our methods. To be able to focus on our methods I'm gonna write some regions here so I can collapse the properties and never worry about them again. And as you can see I'm writing region properties over here and I'm gonna close the region right at the end of our properties Now this way we can collapse the whole region and never worry about them at all. So far we have our elements defined, we have our connector defined, we have our constructor right over here and our properties defined right over here. And the next thing we need to do is to try and get our value display element from the XAML. Remember we have put it in the XAML right over here and now we need to use it in the code. And for this we're gonna use the onApplyTemplate method. This onApplyTemplate method will allow us to get the value display text block from our XAML and initialize the connector. So let's go ahead and initialize the connector. Our initialize connector method will make sure that our connector is not initialized only in design time and not in runtime. We're gonna have a new instance of our connector and this connector is gonna register to the signal change handler and to the language change handler. Now before going forward let's take a few steps back and look at our code and what we have so far. So we have our elements displayed, we have our constructor, our properties and we have our onApply template. Our onApply template will allow us to get the value display text block when the control template is loaded and initialize the connector. When initializing the connector we're gonna make sure that the connector will be initialized only at design time and it will register to the signal change handler and language change handler. So let's go on with the signal change handler. The signal change handler will require a server name. In our case we're using local server so this string is empty. A signal name and the signal changed method. So the signal changed method is the method that actually will verify if the signal value is null or not and if it is not null as you can see right over here the signal value which will be a double will be written to our element which we defined in the first steps of our control and then the display signal value depending on the web factory language method will be called now when we look at the register language change handler we're gonna see we need an on language change delegate which is gonna be another method we'll create right over here and this on language change delegate will recall the same method as our signal changed method so the display signal value depending on the web factory language method and it's time to define this method so everything is in place 
this display signal value depending on web factory language method will verify the culture using the culture info cache and will write the value to our string regarding the culture. Now as you can see our culture info cache and designer properties require some other usings that we don't yet have placed. So to be able to check in the initialize connector method if the connector is initialized in design time or runtime we will need to add another using and this using is gonna be the system component model and as you can see the, the designer property now works perfectly and also the culture info cache needs another using and this using is gonna be the WF Silverlight Core Helper and now everything works okay the code is complete and it does everything we need it to do and let's take another look at the code so we have a big picture in our minds we have the elements defined we have the construct constructor we have the properties we have the on apply template which when the control is loaded and the template is applied will get our value display and initialize the connector we're initializing the connector checking if it runs in design time or run time and it registers to the signal change handler and language change handler with the signal changed we're gonna take the value as double and put it in the signal value element and call the display signal value depending on the language method again on the language changed we're gonna call the same method and this method will check the culture and write our value depending on that culture so basically the control works perfectly but we still need another step to do and this is the I disposable method now as you can see here our signal value output inherits the control and we're gonna make it inherit something else it's I disposable using I disposable we can make sure that the control is unregistered from the signal change handler and from the language change handler when it's not using them anymore so this way we won't have any memory leaks so we're gonna go to the bottom of our code over here and we're gonna place the I disposable region as you can see it is a region and this region will clean up our memory when using the connector so the I disposable does the following it disposes the resources using the dispose connector method the dispose connector method makes sure that the WF connector we have initialized on apply template right over here it unregisters from the signal change handler and unregisters from the language change handler and after this unregistering is done the public method dispose is called and this dispose method makes sure that we are disposing the connector only once now our code is complete and the control looks perfect we have no errors we have no underlines in the code so everything seems pretty nice so I'm gonna hit F6 on my keyboard to build on the debug our control now our control is built with success as you can see here and we have no error so next we're gonna move on in blend and test everything we have done now in expression blend we're gonna create a new project and we're gonna make it a silverlight application on end website I'm gonna click OK and we need to reference the WF core and our own DLL so in web factory installation folder silverlight 4 standard you're gonna find the WF core just like we did in Visual Studio hit open to reference it and the next DLL we need to reference is actually our control we just built so head into Visual Studio projects select your project go into your bin and debug folder and select the custom control library DLL which is our control and now we have our custom control reference to our blend project so we're gonna go into the assets panel and start typing signal and right over here you have the signal value output control drag it into the page and down here we have the web factory category just as we configured in our properties and as you can see if I bring back my Visual Studio 
in the properties we have our signal name property residing in the web factory category and having set points to as default signal and we also have the object ID and the signal prefix well all these properties are visible here because this is actually what we have done we have the object ID we have the signal name and we have the signal prefix and you, see, you can see over here the set point two signal is already selected but we can write anything we want for example set point one and we can run our project to see how it works meanwhile I'm gonna bring up the test center and we're gonna test our custom control now our expression blend project is built and we can see our control over here displaying the zero value this is because our set point one signal which we had placed in the signal name property field has the value 0 so I'm gonna test it by entering 22 as value and as expected our control works perfectly and the value of the signal is displayed right over here so I hope you have enjoyed this and we're gonna meet in the second part of this video tutorial when I'm gonna show you how to put design time browsers for expression blend in our control